Hello, hello, everyone. It's so glad to see you. Let's see, Lita, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you get well soon. Hello, Harriet and Michelle and Julia, Missy, Lori. Hello, hello. Let's see, I don't want to miss anybody that is coming in. Beth, hello. You guys are so sweet. And you can tell I am in my cozy clothes this evening, ready to put together a card. We're going to do a little more ink blending tonight, and you guys are going to help me out this evening. So put on your thinking caps, and um, we're going to change up the card that we made on um, Tuesday, Monday night. It's Wednesday already. We're going to change this up, and I'm going to show you a totally different card, a few of the same techniques with different products, um, still super easy. So if you need to put together a quick, you know, birthday, sympathy, whatever, depending on the color scheme and the sentiment and things you choose, you will have it made in no time. So you guys are going to help me out tonight. So there's Robin and Janet and Paula and Susan and Pam and Martha. Hello. Let's see. Olivia. Hello. All right. And there's Lois. All right, everyone. Okay, so while everyone's popping in, I do want to invite you all, if you have not already, I am teaching a free class, or we're going to craft together over on the Honeybee Stamps uh, Facebook group page, and it is called Honeybee Stamps Buzzworthy Challenges. And there is a photo of, you can see the cute little bird right back here. We're going to create that card together. And if you've looked for the post that has that photo on it over there on Facebook, you'll see all the details. As it's at the end of this month. And I will have a prep day where we can all get together live on here. I'll walk through. We'll all prep together. And then that way, when it's time to do our class on the 29th, all of our die cuts are all ready to go. We have our ink colors and everything all pulled out and all ready to go. And it's just going to be a great time of us crafting together. I can share kind of little tips and tricks and things like that. And you can ask questions in the chat. And so it'll just be a great time for us to spend together and uh, craft this sweet little card over there. And let me think if there's anything else. I don't think that there's anything else. Um, Honeybee Stamps and myself, I'm so excited to get to go. We're going to be at Create in Ohio next week. And so if you are taking part in Create, or if you're going to go shop and visit and do the make and takes and stuff like that, I would love for you guys to come by and say hi and um, uh, see the cards that we're making and things like that. Um, let me think what, if there's anything else that I needed to tell you. I don't think so, but, um, yeah, Monday night, I plan to go live here as usual. And then Wednesday, we're going to be traveling to Ohio. So instead of having our normal lives, crafty live stream, we will probably go live from create and just do, you know, a little, um, show around of like maybe some some of the make and takes we're making and how our little booth and everything is set up. It's always kind of fun. We're going to have a lot of our design team members there. So um, it would be really nice for you guys to get to see them and say hi to them in person. And so watch out for that. We will um, go live and kind of have some fun that way. All right. Let's see. I'd love to watch what my survivor group watches on. I'll catch the replay. Deb, I'm a survivor junkie too. So you go watch Survivor and you can catch me later. Okay, you guys. So let's go down to my desk view here and you can see the card that we created on Monday night. And so I made my own little fake stencil out of some dyes. 
you can see this, I, I kept my little fake stencil background that we use. And this is the card we created. So we're going to use kind of a similar and start out in a similar way tonight. We're going to change it up a little bit. And that's where I have all of these dies pulled out. And you are going to help me. So let's go through some shapes. And th this is where we talked about how you can choose any shape die that you have. You can see some of mine are well loved. They're older in the honeybee uh, stamp collection and years and years I've had some of these but we have a hexagon we've got just a good old rectangle we have kind of like this square postage stamp um, we have a scalloped oval and then we've got some good old circles and so if you will put in the chat and I'm just going to look to see kind of what's getting the most votes here for shape. So circles, a scallop, and I'm going to show you how we can go with not really having a plan to creating something really beautiful, a rectangle or a hexagon. Okay, I see postage stamp, hexagon. Let's see here. Um, postage stamp. Okay. Hexagon. So I'm seeing hexagon and I'm seeing postage stamp. Maybe because those are like different, like a little bit more of an odd scallops. I see the scallops, the circle, Dawn with a good old circle, the ovals. Let's see here, postage stamp. Okay. I think maybe postage stamps got the most votes. So let's go ahead and let's move on with our postage stamps. So there are these little squares. And what I'm going to do first is I know that I want to use these big time sentiments. So this is the big time kindness. You can see I've got my dies underneath here. And what I like to do when choosing the size of the die that I want for my card is I kind of will take my sentiments that I want to use. And it's going to depend on what you need to say. So if you're wanting like a, and I'm sorry about the glare, my, my lights up there. It, it, it's going to depend on what you want to say, whether you need a sympathy card or, you know, a birthday card or whatever for what is going to fit. And I am kind of wanting to use just a good old hello friend, which is kind of, you know, just a generic sentiment that I can send to anybody and I kind of hold up my dies to see which is going to fit. And you can see that these are so much older than all the rest of them that some of these I have not even clipped apart, but I can clip them apart really fast here. So you guys know that this is like no prep going into this. I am taking you guys word for it and we're going with it. Okay. So I, I'm going to kind of use a shape or the size, I should say, that's going to house and have a little landing place for my big time kindness greeting. Okay. So I'm going to take my little postage stamp and I can lay my sentiments aside for now. And this is where we're going to create our, let me pick it up here, our stencil. So I can lay this down anywhere on what's going to be our background. We can do, you know, dead center here. We could do kind of an upper center like so. So it kind of depends on like where we want to put it. What do you guys think? Do you think, you know, right in the center or should I do maybe upper center a little bit? So, and then have a little bit of not really uh, white space, but uh, open space down here, flying by the seat of my pants. Yes, every once in a while, I'll do something really dangerous, Don, and kind of fly by the seat of my pants. Let's see. I like some up. I do the upper. I think um, everybody's kind of thinking the same way as me. I was kind of thinking the upper, too. And all I'm going to do, this is so easy, is, um, you know, kind of line it up, eyeball it. I'm going to tape this puppy down. 
And then I've got my Gemini sitting here next to me and it's all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to run this through. And then we're going to have kind of a fake stencil again. I cannot wait until the new Gemini 2 comes out because you can hear my machine is so loud and I hear, or maybe I should say I don't hear, but I was watching um, the, the live streams and things from Creativation and the new Gemini 2, it has like hardly any sound at all. So for, you know, crafters like myself or people that have classes or things like that, it will be um, really handy. Okay, now we've got our fake stencil, right? And I've got my actual background that we're going to use on our card. So there's our stencil space. Now, what's really cool is I really could have flipped it up and we could have done, if I had a larger sheet of paper, we could have done something like that and put this uh, sentiment in the center. You can kind of play with your dies and rearrange them to where you're going to get a different look um, every time. So let's go ahead and let's just, I'm going to tape this down just to help me out while I am ink blending. Now I did choose for this evening, I chose a different color scheme. Last uh, Monday we went with yellows and greens into a turquoise. So I have a worn lipstick here, some squeezed lemonade and salvaged patina. And this is almost going to blend together into um, almost kind of a modern kind of funky looking um, rainbow almost. Okay. So I am going to ink up just a little bit with the worn lipstick and I'm going to rub a lot of it off. I'm going to go pretty light handed here. I'm going to start at the bottom with the pink and blend up into the salvage patina. And I'm just going to get down into the nooks and crannies of that little postage stamp shape. Maybe a little more heavy handed here towards the bottom and a little bit lighter as we move up to what's going to be the squeeze lemonade. You could go as light or as dark as you want. If you want your colors really super saturated, then by all means, get your brush really super inky and you can go to town with that ink and ink blending. Okay, so now let's use Squeeze Lemonade. And I'm not going to ink up my brush this time. I'm going to go straight in with my dirty brush. And I'm going to go over that pink just a hair. Kind of pull it up and you're going to see the kind of orangey shade start coming out where those two colors, the pink and the yellow, are kind of blending together there. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Pull it down just a little bit. And now we're getting this orangey shade. We have that true worn lipstick down here. And then we're fading up into that squeezed lemonade. And now let's pull in the salvaged patina. I am going to ink this puppy just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to start off of my fake stencil. And then we're going to pull it all down onto our paper. Moving down. These colors are going to be really pretty and really springy, summery. Okay. Let's pull it on down into that yellow a little bit so we get a little bit of a green going on. Just like that. And I am going to take one more little dip, dip, dip into the yellow. And let's do one more little pass here. Blend it up and blend it down just like that. And then the salvage patina. I think we're looking good. Okay, 
quick, easy peasy. Okay, so let's go ahead and peel this back. And then we'll see what kind of magic we have here. Okay, so there is our pretty little ink blend, right? Do you see the rainbow that we have going on there? So this would be super cute as a little birthday card or, you know, whatever. Depending on, you know, the colors. If you're doing a sympathy card, maybe you want to do like blues and greens or um, greens and yellows. And I think I'm finished with my mat. Okay, so now we're not done. Now I have another choice for you guys to make. So instead of doing a stamp and kind of doing the half on, half off little technique that we tried out here, this time let's run our ink blended panel that we have here. Let's run it through the dye machine with a 3D embossing folder. Okay, so do you guys think with our little ink blend that we have going on here that we should use the, the daisies or the dogwood? So just write daisies or dogwood there in the chat and I'm going to start looking there and we'll see what we get here. You guys are in charge of the card tonight, which is so fun. Normally I am like, the master of prep time because I get everything cut, everything done. It is a hard cho choice. They're both really pretty. So this one is a lot more like playful and quirky. This could go for anything. This could go for a beautiful birthday card. A, it would be gorgeous as a sympathy card, depending on the colors, you know, things like that. I see, I see dogwood, daisies, daisies. Oh man, it's a good split. You guys are like split right down the middle. Daisy, I'm seeing a lot of daisies. Daisies. Daisies for a friend. I like that. Okay, so let's go with our daisies here. So I'm going to put the pretty dogwood aside. And then like all of our pretty, you know, 3D embossing folders, we have, you know, what the side that is more flat and the side that is raised. And I'm just going to kind of pop this in just like this. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. If you like want to tape yours in, you could do that. And now I'm gonna send this one through the Gemini. And let's see what we get. Squeezing that paper down. Let's see here. Boo. Hi, Mindy. Oh, there's Mindy. Oh, Mindy said dogwood. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here's the reveal. Ta-da. Look how cute and kind of fun that is. Okay. I'm going to pull it off of all that pretty texture. We have a cute background. You know what's kind of fun? is I didn't spritz it, obviously, but look how on some of these, like right in here, where, because an embossing folder, the nature of it, when it, when it um, bends the paper and it creases the paper like that, is it's break down, it's breaking down the fibers of the paper, right, to get it into that shape. You can see in certain spots there, do you see where it's broken down the paper and it's almost got like white little tips, on our daisies here. It's kind of a fun little thing, but it would be fun to add, you know, um, some perfect pearls in there or something fun. Um, but there's all kinds of ways that you can kind of zhuzh up your embossed panels. Okay. Now, do you see where we're going here? All right. Now look at the difference. So same or similar techniques that we have going here totally different outcome but just as simple you know do a little ink blending use a really pretty embossing folder and you get a totally different vibe to your card right okay so now we need some a really pretty sentiment to go on that and let me set that aside and i'm gonna use my scrap from our fake stencil right 
I'm going to use my scrap as what I stamp on. So I'm going to put it in here just like that. And let's use the Hello Friend. Let's see. I love how soft it is. Would have never thought to do that. Well, I, it was kind of fun for me to create the um, kind of fake ink, ink blended card that we had. That It's not a fake ink blend. It was a fake stencil, really, is we made our own stencil. Um, I think I'm going to regret doing this like this, but we're going to, I'm going to hold my breath. There we go. Um, it was kind of fun to create that. It was a different card for me, not one that I would normally create. And so I thought, okay, how can we expand upon this idea of a quick and easy card, but something that's going to look, you know, way fancier than what we actually spent time putting together. Okay, so just good old versifying ink for that sentiment because it's going to tie in with our uh, black cardstock, but you could heat emboss it or you know, whatever you wanted to do. All right, I'm going to pull out the coordinating dies. And there is a die that goes with that Hello Friend. Let me pull it off here. And then let's line that up. And we're going to use the same pink highlighter tape to hold this down. Let me get it all lined up here. Just like that. Tape it down. Now I'm going to pull out my little baby machine here. I love this thing for just like this, for sentiments, little die cuts, doing little pieces to layering die sets and things like that. I love my little bitty buzz cutter. Okay, so let's pop this out and let's see what we have here. If I can get my fingers to go in here. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right, now we've got some little pieces that we need to release from our die cut. There we go. Super simple. Now let's see what we've got here. So we've got our pretty little daisies, our rainbow background, and then let's see if that's really going to pop off of there. Look how simple. And then we may need to add some like little gems or jewels or something, I think. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do just like the last card that we did on Monday. Let's pop it up. Let's pop up this little, little panel and make it a little bit dimensional. Let's see here. Bitty Buzz Cutter. So cute. So cute. And so handy. When um, I had a little min mini die machine before this one, um, it was the We Are Memory Keepers, I believe, little mini die machine. And I liked it, but it's not nearly as easy. Like this one will runs through like butter. Um, I was able to kind of try and test out the ones that we got in and I am in love with this one. Anybody I always tell, cause there's a lot of crafters that have, you know, carpal tunnel and they have issues with their hands. There's no issues with um, pushing the plates into this one and cranking it. It's really easy. Okay. So I'm going to pop that down there and then lightly press that foam into place. And then since we have dimension going on with our daisies and then we raised up our card panel with that foam tape, let's just do our sentiment with liquid adhesive. So I'm just going to do some dots here if I can get my glue to come out slowly but surely. Let's see here. Oh, Lita had a good idea. Let's see. Where is her? Lita... Um, you want to get a card kit to get a crafting fist. Sometimes card kits are um, the way to go. I know that's, I've done that a lot of times. If I'm in a, like a crafty funk, 
a card kit or, um, you know, a new release from some company or something that I see something that I like. But I like to do card kits too. Okay, so I'm thinking like right in here in the center. And I'm going to let that go. And I like to hold it up kind of right in front of my face to make sure that it's all going to be nice and straight. And then let's let that liquid adhesive set up and let's pick out, let's do, since this one's a little more fun and funky, let's do some gems this time. So I've got like modern spring and these are harder to see. I've got these that are a little more rainbowy. Hold on, let's see. Let's get, let me find a white piece of paper. That's a little bit easier to see. See how those are going to kind of go with our little rainbow situation that we have going on? I think I might use these. Happy hearts. I think that's the happy hearts gems. Yes, I'm just matching my colors here. Okay, so this is the Happy Hearts gem stickers. And you know, I haven't used the gem stickers as much lately because I'm in love with the all the pearls. And so um, this will be fun to kind of, and I think I'm going to do, I don't want it like the centers of the daisies, but I think I want to kind of coordinate my colors and we'll kind of sprinkle them through as we go up here. So there is that pink. And then there's kind of the, let's use this one as like an orangey yellow and kind of nestle it in maybe. Let's choose a different size. Let's do a baby one in there. Right in there. And we'll kind of have some sprinkles. And then we can go into green. And we could leave it just like that with three. Let's see here. I'm going to tilt it and see if I can catch the, the shimmer. Or do we need more? One, two, three, maybe a couple more. Why not, right? When we're adding like the sparkle stuff. Okay, let's do, let's do maybe another green one, like right up in there. And we have pink and then maybe one more pink one. This is always my hardest decisions of like where to put all the pretty stuff. Let me make sure that that is stuck down. Okay. All right, let's see what we have here. This is kind of fun. Even if you're doing you're doing a friend card, but this would be a fun like little girl's birthday card or even a teen's birthday card. Something like that with the little shimmers and sparkles. Okay, now let's pull out again. Let me kind of clear my desk here so it's not a crafty mess. It's still a crafty mess, but let's see here. Let's go split screen okay all right now look so similar techniques that we did here creating kind of our own little mask or our own stencil we did some super simple ink blending on both of these but look at the difference in the results just by one we did kind of some fun colors with the kind of fake rainbow that we made that blended into a rainbow and then we've got that really kind of fun and quirky 3d embossing folder where this one reads a lot more like elegant this one totally you could put a you know a with sympathy or you're in my thoughts and prayers or something like that on that and it would be absolutely gorgeous now this one, you could totally change the colors up like we mentioned before and do blues and greens and yellows. And then maybe you pull out that, the dogwood embossing folder 
and then add a with sympathy or a happy birthday to somebody that maybe is more mature or something like that. But, you know, similar little techniques using our dyes to make a fun stencil and then pulling out our 3D embossing folder instead. I think that this card was even faster than this one. And this one was super fast the other night. I think this one only took, what, 25, 30 minutes, maybe max. And so super easy, fun results for a really pretty card. Okay, 30 minutes, and I've been like yakking at you the whole time. Are you going to add a white panel on the inside? When I send black cards normally, that's a really great question. Who was that? Sherry, Nor uh, when I normally when I do a live stream, I'll just make the front of the card like this, and then before I send it out, I'll add a white um, panel on the inside and usually I'll trim it down just like this, like it is on the outside. So it has that nice border, put it on the inside. And then, then that's where I'll write my message. Sometimes I'll put like a little stamp, a stamped something on the inside, like miss you so much. And you could put like a happy birthday or, you know, whatever on the inside and then, you know, write the message out. But I normally save that until, um, you know, right before I send it out. And then just and stick that in there. Anytime I use like really dark cardstock like that, like a really rich green, um, I do that. Um, normally that's like around the holiday times when you're really into those dark jewel tones. I'll put um, I'll put a white panel on the inside. You're welcome. Everybody's loving the emboss. Yes, yeah, super simple and easy. And if you ever try some of the ideas and things, I would love to see your cards in our challenge group. You can always post in there. It doesn't have to be part of our challenge. But I saw some of you mention that, uh, it may have been Miss Lori mentioned that she wanted to use her uh, dogwood stuff and maybe her embossing folder and stuff like that. I would love to see you guys post those cards so we all can see them and you guys have really great ideas and um i i always learn a lot from you guys too let's see two tips on posting to the challenge group um all you do miss Lori, do you use a, a cell phone like a smartphone that's what i do is I take a picture with my cell phone and I put it, you can put it right in there on the, on the challenge group. It will like when it says, do you want to make a post? You can choose the photo and then pull it right down off of that like that. And Miss Lori, if you have trouble with it, if you'll email me, I, I can help you with it too. Let's say the embossing automatically increases interest a couple of notches. It does. It totally does. And it makes it look like somebody that's going to receive this is going to go, oh, my gosh, that's really fancy where we, you know, it took five seconds to run it through our dye machine. It, it doesn't take any time at all. Same thing with like this little stamping, the half on, half off technique makes it look a little modern, a little bit quirky. But then we added these simple little marker uh, strokes right in here. And so it adds just that little bit of that handmade touch in there that we all love. And they're like, oh, wow, you know, somebody spent a lot of time doing this. Where in actuality, you know, it was a really quick card to put together. All right. All right, you guys, it's time for our live stream giveaway. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think I am the lucky person that gets to choose our winner tonight because I know Lisa is in Oregon and those ladies have been so busy in the warehouse doing all the things there at the Honeybee Stamps headquarters. And our winner tonight is Robin uh, Bernier. I hope I'm saying that right. Robin Bernier, you're the winner this evening. Let's see here. Robin right here is Miss Robin. She's our winner. And it's Minnie Mouse. Oh my goodness. Look at her little uh, icon there. It's Minnie Mouse. Congratulations, Robin. If you'll email me at Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I'll hook you up with your gift card. And Miss Lita, if you are still here, I hope you start feeling better. And I sent you an email today. So make sure you check your email. 
All right, you guys, join me on Monday for another little card making session and then join us next week while we're in Ohio so we can show you all the fun that we're having there at Create with our Honeybee Stamps booth. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Bye bye.